Maybe having some technical issues at the moment because I could swear D joined the room, but I can't see him in the Zoom room. So bear with me for just a second while I mute. Hold on. Oh, that's right. It's on uh, Firefox. <laughs> right, so it's going to take a second for me to open it up. Uh, I guess I will have to probably mute myself briefly while I open the links and stuff. How am I going to do this properly? Because my computer always runs out of RAM. Freaking Apple. They could totally put more RAM in these computers, but they decided not to. Uh, bear with me, ladies and germs. Hopefully this doesn't start blasting sound. I guess I'll mute myself just in case. There we go. No YouTube videos open or anything. No problems. Uh, ladies and germs, I'm going to post the link here to join us in just a second. Uh, still no D. How weird is that? Well, anyway, uh, hopefully we're live. It looks like we are live. One person's watching. Weird day. Are we on the wrong time or what? It's freaking noon. First in. Super weird, bro. All right, now I have to mute myself for a second. All right, there we go. Hello, everybody. Hello, Christophe. Bonjour. Uh, bonsoir, probably. Uh, uh, Robert Bandula. Good to see you, buddy. Crime or Grows. Welcome. Uh, like I said, I D joined the room. Like uh, uh, he was on the email, and then somehow I don't know. We lost D. So hopefully, uh, hopefully, didn't D didn't get eaten by a uh, black hole or something, or I don't know, Canadian alligators, Can Canadian Canadian gators, something. Anyway, so I said I was going to post the link, and then I did not post the link. Call me a liar. There you go. Oh, there it is. Join us, ladies and germs. Uh, join me, rather, because uh, it's just me right now. I'm so used to having D on here. It's like uh, unusual to uh, only be here by myself. Cheers, Miss Chronic. Good to see you. Uh, what's the word I was looking for? Well, welcome. First off, welcome to the show, ladies and germs. I guess I should probably post that or show that uh, thingamajigger video that uh, D usually shows for me, because otherwise, almost guaranteed, some MFR will... Uh, report the show uh let's see here where is it at my other channel flavors yeah fumidor and the freaking flavors what 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 videos what's that Hi there, everybody. There's a bird's nest behind me, and that bird is telling you that, first of all, uh, before anything else in the show, uh, the show is uh, for adults only, 21 and over. Wherever you are, if the rules are a little bit different, if you have to be 23 or 24 or something else, please follow your local rules. Where I am, it's 21 and over to be an adult, so please do follow those rules. The show is not for children. It is for adults only. Please also remember that the show is uh, completely and totally drug-free. We do not actually purvey any kind of drugs of any kind. You cannot get drugs from this show of any kind. You cannot buy them. You cannot borrow them. You cannot steal them. You cannot get them bequeathed to you. You cannot get drugs from this show. So please do not bother reporting this show for purveying drugs or anything else. You cannot in any way get drugs from the Show. There's no secret menu. There's no super super secret menu. There's no other way to get any kind of illegal product from my show. Also, please remember, uh, we're doing this a little bit impromptu, so please uh, bear with us, ladies and gentlemen, for the bird squawks and everything else. Extremely dangerous challenges are not shown on the show. Challenges that pose an imminent risk of physical injury are never shown. Dangerous or threatening pranks are also never shown on the show. Pranks that lead victims to fear imminent, serious physical danger or that create serious emotional distress in minors. Instructions to kill or harm are never shown on the show. Showing viewers how to perform activities meant to kill or maim others. For example, giving instructions to build a bomb meant to injure or kill others. Hard drug use or its creation is never shown on the show. Content that depicts abuse of or giving instructions on how to create hard drugs such as cocaine or opioids. Hard drugs are defined as drugs that can mostly lead to physical addiction. I add the proviso that sometimes you'll hear people on the show interact or have uh, tell stories about how they have interacted in one way or the other with some drugs, cocaine, op uh, opioids, other drugs in their past. Please always assume that those are negative portrayals. Those are uh, cautionary tales and you should never under any circumstances emulate those stories. It's the position of Fumidoro and uh, Fumidoro the Flavors, everyone on Fumidoro and all of the guests that drugs are bad and you should not under any circumstances emulate uh, uh, those stories. 
And of course, my phone locked while I was talking. Uh, instructional theft or cheating is never shown, ladies and gentlemen. Showing viewers how to steal tangible goods or promoting dishonest behavior would never be discussed on the show. Hacking is never Cheers. shown. Demonstrating how to use computers or information technology with the intent to steal credentials, compromise personal data, or cause serious harm to others, such as but not limited to hacking into Good morning, everybody. Accounts. And finally, bypassing payment for digital content or services. Showing viewers how to use apps, websites, or other information information technology to gain unauthorized access to audio content, uh, audiovisual content, full video games, software, or streaming services that normally require payment. We would never discuss any of those things. Finally, once again, ladies and gentlemen, the show is, of course, for adults only. And of course, we do not, under any circumstances, offer drugs to you. Even though other channels might have secret menus, we do not. We under and, under no circumstances can you find anything illegal in the show. The cannabis content that we do discuss is legal under the, two, under the 2018 Farm Bill, and the seeds that we purvey also are legal. All the breeders that come uh, through the show, it's legal for us to purvey seeds because the seeds have no THC in them, so they are legal under the two, 2018 Farm Bill. Thanks, folks, for bearing with the uh, introduction of the prologue here. We've recorded it maybe for the future. I don't know. Maybe if it's good enough, maybe maybe this will be the one. Maybe we'll have to re-record it. But in the meantime, uh, hopefully, D makes some use of it. And uh, cheers, folks. Oh. Uh, indeed. Thank you. Now for I can hear you. Ladies and germs. Uh, what's that, Captain? I said now I can hear you. <laughs> oh, you couldn't hear the video? I, no, I I couldn't. I had to go back into settings. Oh, okay. So it was audible. It just you couldn't hear it. Gotcha. Uh, good to see everybody. Good to see Mr. Craigie. Uh, did I say hello to Miss Chronic? I think I did. Uh, uh, welcome, Miss Chronic. Welcome, everybody. Welcome, lurkers, non-lurkers. Welcome, everybody. Uh, in a very unusual twist, uh, uh, we'll say hello to Captain 420 first. Uh, what's going on, buddy? <laughs> Cheers. Eh, you know, I ended up being up at 3 o'clock in the morning, so I thought I'd join you. <laughs> there you go. I'm glad you're here. Good to see you, even if it yeah. is uh, bright and early or dark and late or whatever the case may be. What's going on, D? What's going on, everybody? Hope everybody's having a great day. Um, tweeting for delivery. Well, they kind of messed it up, so I'm waiting for them to come back again. Um, um, yeah, I guess that's it because you already said everything I had to say, Fimidor. Cheers, everybody. Right on. Cheers. Yeah, I missed <laughs> my delivery yesterday, too, but. I left the gate unlocked and they realized that. So they just put my cocoa pots. I bought cocoa core pots oh, that's to cool. start everything in. And those came when I was at the hospital yesterday, which I have to go back to again today uh. for my second surgery. Mm. So, uh, is this the one where they give you super hearing or super sight, or is that the other one? No, they just—they're taking metal out of me. <laughs> Dang it! They're—they're they're supposed to put more metal into you so that you can become the sixty-four million dollar man. Uh, well, I'm already about ten million. Holy shit! Really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you imagine how much that. I mean, the helicopter ride from my accident to the hospital, that was a 25-minute helicopter ride. <laughs> well, that's not $5 million or something. That's probably a few thousand dollars, though. Yeah, but there was eight titanium plates in my face. There's a titanium rod down my leg. I mean, you spend 13 and a half hours in the operating room. That's got to be something. and. Uh, 40 days in ICU. It's an amazing uh, thing to think about, too, because in the U.S., we obviously <laughs> think about it in that way, like, oh, my God, how expensive, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> but most of the rest of the world, and we have a, a worldwide audience, we have even a few people from other countries that, that have a completely different system. Like, I was just in Israel for a month, and, you know, my mom was in the hospital the whole time, and da-da-da, and whatever. I guess let's not get into the whole details of the story. But anyway, um uh, what am I trying to say that uh, the entire understanding of medical care is different, basically, like I didn't have to worry about any of the expenses. I didn't have to worry about any of the freaking bills or anything uh, that that was just not even a conclusion, even like uh, uh, nursing homes and stuff are basically provided for. I mean, I guess there are some private nursing homes, but there are perfectly nice nursing homes for older people that basically need to go to a nursing home. Whereas in the U S holy fucking shit balls, a friend of mine's grandmother is like 98 years old. And she's recently just moved in with her uh, also, honestly, older uh, 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 kids, basically her son, basically her, well, no, with her son mm -hmm. and uh, uh, wife and the son and wife are basically like the grandparents now. Right. So she's the great grandma, basically the whole generations anyway. Uh, so she's moved in with the 
already basically retired uh, uh, parents because they have their own house and that, you know, they have like a grandma apartment or whatever. Uh, it's quite a nice place and stuff. But the point I'm trying to make is that she was in a nursing home that was charging her $8,000 a month. And it was not considered like a luxury nursing home. Apparently you have to pay much, much no. more to have an actual luxury nursing yeah. home in the U.S. That was basically just a fucking home. For example, one of the most annoying yeah. things was that she oftentimes would either... I don't remember, honestly, she would miss lunch, basically. I don't remember if she slept through it or what. But anyway, she would miss lunch uh, instead of going downstairs. I think it's two floors down, I guess the story went, uh, to go to lunch. And she, for whatever reason, wouldn't go down to lunch. They would charge her $30, not for the cost of the lunch. The lunch was already something else that she had paid. To bring it to cost her. 30 bucks to bring yeah. her lunch. Yeah, 30 bucks. That's crazy. Yeah. Whereas like in Israel, See, none of that kind of stuff uh, was in any way uh, the case. And in my family, me being disabled, I was looked upon to take care of my grandparents. Sure. So, and the same thing is happening with my parents. They're not going to well, go one of the reasons why is because home. we don't have a system to take care of anybody. You know, like I'm talking about, other yeah. countries have these systems that can actually take care of people. It was pretty fucking eye opening, honestly. You know, we talk about right wing this, left wing that. Well, Israel has had a, a what we would normally call a very government for a very long time now and yet the country doesn't see economic issues in the same way like the country is significantly more socialized i guess we would say in this country uh not only that but honestly there is a sense of uh uh, 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 uh there's an expression for this but i can't think of what it is right now anyway uh financial care of your elder <laughs> uh, that too, but I guess I was going to slightly change the subject. Financial patriotism, like uh, people, not everybody, I'm sure they have scoundrels too, uh, but uh, there's quite a bit more internal investment and you can see it really directly. Everything is being built. Uh, you can see it also directly in terms of uh, something that was really eye opening. Hundreds of fucking grocery stores in even small towns. So for the most part, I spent my time in the north of Israel in, in you know, fairly unpopulated places in Tiberias and uh, uh, Safed. And both towns are either like 55,000 and Safed's like I don't know, 30,000 or something. Both those towns had hundreds of grocery stores. Hundreds, literally fucking hundreds. So if you look on the map, like, oh, I got to go to a grocery store or something, there's literally 10 in every fucking direction. You can walk to any of them in three or four minutes. Uh, they had real grocery stores, what we would think of as like supermarkets. Well, re real grocery stores, what we're trying to say. Anyway, they had supermarkets. They had, uh, 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 I guess, uh, warehouse clubs, which I didn't get to go to. Them, so I checked, by the way, but uh, they don't have Costco in Israel yet, but they apparently do have like warehouse clubs. Uh, but that goes all the way down to neighborhood markets where you walk in, there's fresh fruit and everything else. Uh, it was super eye opening because in here in a town of, well, Corvallis, not too far from here, is a town of about 55,000. They probably don't have 15 or 20 grocery stores total. Like I bet Wait you, if I, look, I bet you, there's less than twenty. And you know, if you count all the farmers markets they might have, you know, once a week or something, you might get up to thirty. But they don't. They don't have any two hundred fucking markets. That's for sure. And by the way, Tiberius also has a uh, uh, weekly and semi-weekly farmers markets too. So that the number even goes up from there. Oh, and not only that, but they have. I didn't. I don't know about Tiberius. I'm sure they have the same thing because in Safed, uh, there was this truck that drove around yelling gibberish because I don't understand Hebrew, but he was yelling gibberish uh, like an ice cream truck. And I was like, that's a fucking weird looking ice cream truck. So my relative was like, oh no, that's the vegetable truck. Literally, the vegetable truck basically drives around, and if you want fresh vegetables, you can buy them straight from the fucking truck. Hundreds the of here. ways to buy food. Uh, basically, it's a completely different financial system where they don't suck the money somewhere out, somewhere. We used to talk about it maybe 15 years ago until basically Walmart and Amazon and everybody won the relentless money. How do they call it? The uh, relentless sucking sound or something or the relentless money funnel i'm forgetting how we used to talk about it but basically it was the idea of uh, essentially capital flight through corporate ownership basically and when you drive through any town these days in the u.s you'll see the dollar tree fucking uh hobby lobby home depot all these different places that are headquartered some fucking <laughs> And never locally, right? Whereas basically, like I'm saying, in many other countries, they have these uh, uh, local things. I guess I'm going on all kinds of fucking tangents. But uh, yeah, then of course you have the Israeli chicks with guns. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I guess I was, I, I've been meaning to talk about this stuff. How did I even get on this subject? I guess we were talking about, uh, fuck, now I don't even remember how we got on the goddamn subject. 
how I got on the subject. But, but hey. that's funny. You're talking about all these grocery stores, and I'm in a town with 70,000 people, and we have three grocery stores like we would oh, call back oh, in the States. Oh, fucking interesting. And we have, we have one place that's called Macro. It's like Costco, but a quarter of the size. Huh. But you can buy anything from TVs to air conditioners to ovens to a couple kilos of, of meat in their meat department. Or you could buy 10 boxes of detergent because you have to buy them in multiples. Talk about keeping your weights white. Let's check. But, yeah, we got 7-Elevens out the ass, though. <laughs> and we have one market here that basically feeds all the little, little farmers' markets. What's going on, Smash? Welcome. Oh, no sound. What's up? Sorry, I'm getting my computer on. Give me like two seconds. Oh, no worries. Okay, there's not 200 maybe, but there's a fucking ton. Basically, here there's... That's more than I have. <laughs> there's... Okay, honestly, I think there's more than this, frankly, because when I was there, every time I would look, there would basically just be market after market after market. Uh, well, there, the more we zoom in, the more uh, shit there is. Yeah, like there's a there's honestly a bunch. Okay, so maybe there wasn't 200, but there's easily a fucking 85 or 100. Uh, same thing okay. with, uh, I guess they call it spot. If you have four, you have more than I do. <laughs> and we have 70,000. Oh, no, that's in. No, that is actually spot. Grocery store. Damn. Then maybe I wouldn't have to pay seven dollars for a bottle of barbecue sauce. <laughs> so again, a bunch. Maybe I'm off by a four factor of ten, <laughs> but still, uh, near Corvallis. Yeah, but come on, I got three. All right, maybe there isn't quite the freaking... Oh, they even have a Trader Joe's in Corvallis. Look at that. Uh, wow. There isn't quite the same disparity, but still, there there seems to be... I noticed a huge uptick, basically, in numbers of grocery stores. Let, let me just put it that way. Okay, perhaps that's anecdotal. I stand by it. Uh, I reserve the right to be wrong. I still don't think there's a whole lot of difference here because a lot of these are Safeway for... Okay, Corvallis is maybe a little bit different because it has a lot more... It's like a university town, Oregon State University is there, which, by the way, a lot of people don't realize is probably that a lot of the agricultural research that we sort of take for granted in, uh, goodness gracious, in um, uh, GMOs. I mean, we don't really like GMOs, obviously, in cannabis for the most part, except for, actually, uh, you know, the strain GMO, which, by the way, is actually named, a lot of people assume that it's, I, I think I heard smashed and and somebody talking about on my show yesterday, but I think I was off camera. Uh, you guys were talking about GMO. It's not actually garlic mushroom onions. It's basically supposed to be GMO because it grows like a GMO plant. Like it's it's essentially like a cookies uh, 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 phenotype basically that grew so freaking gangbusters and was stinky that they basically said, shit, that grows like GMO. And a lot of people think it you know smells like garlic and stuff. I actually think it smells more oh. like, like stir fry onions. But... When, when uh, GMO was coming out, Girl Scout cookies got in trouble for having actual like GMOs in their cookies. So that was kind of like the the push for GMO it, cannabis I guess. though? Oh GMO GMO no. like cookies. I gotcha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Girl Scout yeah. cookies. Yeah. Um what town are you in again, uh, Captain 420? I, I was actually curious about the grocery store. Shang. All right. C H I a N G R. There's a little bit more than that. Uh, I don't know if they're open, but there's a little bit more than three. Okay, we have one that's called a grocery store that is right around the corner from my house. 
They don't sell any live or fresh <laughs> produce. They just <laughs> started <laughs> selling milk <laughs> one year ago. No, I, I actually believe you because one of the grocery stores that even had one is bro. literally somebody's balcony. So I don't think it's I don't think it's a fucking grocery store. This is no, the shop. it is. It's underneath. The shops oh, okay. are on the first floor, and oh, then you live sense. above it. That I actually, I'm in February. I'm moving into a four unit building that has four shops on the bottom floor. And they're a little bit wider than those. That makes sense. No, you're right. We, and we I, get used to a completely different style of living, basically. Like in the U.S., it's, well, okay, I guess there are places in, in, in cities for the most part. I guess you'll have them in smaller towns, too, anytime you have apartments over a business. But it's a little bit unusual for us. That's when, a bank. Like, oh, yeah, my 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 bottom floor, the you know, the floor beneath me is a restaurant or something. But, yeah, like over... Basically, everywhere else, it seems to be very, very common. And Israel is pretty common. It's funny you picked that picture. You're three minutes away from my house, basically, <laughs> there. <laughs> It'd be funny if you were walking by here smoking a joint. What's up, Google? But you see all the, brand, all the nice cars. The cars don't have any rust on them. 33 reviews for whatever that restaurant is. What are they... Kind of food they have. Yeah, and that place is not open all the time. I mean, that place is literally three minutes from my house. <laughs> I think it's funny that you put you pulled up my side of town too. <laughs> now there's a shirt farm the across the street from there. <laughs> Maybe maybe Fumi's got a drone drone over there. He's tracking you, Captain. You yeah. never know. Exactly what I have. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> hey, <laughs> hey where's that? Hey, how come that red dot's coming into my window? Right. In my wall. <laughs> <laughs> Speak into the propeller, please. So mostly <laughs> soups, it looks like. Lots and lots and lots of soups. Uh, a lot of noodle and rice dishes come with broth. Let's see here. What else do they have on this delightful street here? We can go to a 20 shop. Art gallery. Somehow I also don't believe unless that's it yeah that that's downtown so that's a steel distributor if you want some hard rods that's where you go <laughs> and that's an art gallery so where the hell's the grocery store i think they lie i think they fucking grocery lie. stores could be a, a, a like a little convenience store here but we have big c we have tops and then that's it. We have Lotus and 7-Eleven as oh, our right. little markets. Do a search for 7-Elevens in Chiang Rai and see how many come up. <laughs> I want to find the highest rated restaurant in Chiang Rai. That's pretty uh, good. How soy. There's a couple of thousand. Them. They're bar down bar. by the river. In a van down by the river? Yeah, the expensive ones are by the river where the hotels are and the resorts. You went by one. Expensive. Or I just want to know the best rated restaurant in all of Chiang Rai. I'm going to go for this. Uh, where was it? The Barab. best dispensary is hard. We thousand the one I go to. Couldn't possibly be elite or uh, made up. All right. It's apparently something healthy and delicious. Meal by Barab. Okay, so Barab is the owner, I guess. It looks good. Oh, good. Yeah, doesn't it look good? Yeah. You can definitely tell that's expensive. Looks like man bread, though. Looks good. Yeah, it looks like Thai food. Looks like kind of uh, curry noodle.
to be sure you know how clean it is. Oh, oh, I didn't yeah. need to do that. We disinfect our restaurant. Oh, that's probably yep. I was thinking mosquitoes. <laughs> oh wow. Cashew tofu. Oh. Okay. No tofu. What part don't you like? No tofu. No, no tofu. I don't like tofu. Tofu can be good tofu. if it's made right. Sometimes I enjoy it. Yeah, exactly. Sometimes I enjoy it. There's a bunch of Chinese dishes that are basically a plate of tofu, and I just no, I just I couldn't. It'd be just like a plate of un avocado un potatoes, just like just potatoes, you know. Like for that's that's for me. Like it would be like I don't even know, not even like something like mashed potatoes. Just be like boiled potatoes, and someone just gives you an entire plate of it. That would be for me like <laughs> almost it's actually funny. worse than that because I could almost make my way through potatoes because I would salt them and they would at least be tasty. But like the tofu, I don't know. <laughs> here I am salting an entire entire oh. continent of food. Well, the drink. Here, here's a restaurant owned by one of my friends. Okay. La Ola, Chiang Rai, L A, and then O L A. It's something. It's probably not a crab. It's probably a chicken. Leg. Looks good. A lot of nuts. Don't go there if you have a nut allergy. <laughs> yeah. Or if you're a nut, probably also. <laughs> Very disparate food. It looks like they have, well, I don't know, I guess, do they have sort of uh, Indian-inspired wow, food that's in uh, Thailand? Because you guys yeah. are close enough. Oh, okay. Makes yeah. Sense. And we have a lot of curry here. Nice. A lot of curry. Do you have nam bread? That's they good. have everything here. That bread looks good. It's funny we're talking about food. I watched. I was watching a documentary. Well, it's lunchtime. <laughs> oh uh, no! It's it? Spain. Fufu in in Africa. It's like a root that they turn into like. Uh, oh yeah, into like a paste. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's a it's, fine. it's uh, I th I don't think it's too flavorful. Uh, I mean, oh. it's it's okay. not super opinionated it's not like a super loud flavor or something so you could totally get over it but basically like you you use it like as a paste to pick up other stuff yeah and they were saying it's not that my absolute favorite i have to be honest they were I'm saying not... like, towns that have i can't i want to say okra but it's not okra i can't think of the fucking name of the root okra is another Ew. example of something that's a very acquired taste yeah I agree people don't <laughs> Hell, I don't like okra. <laughs> well, they were saying that if, like, this or town okra. uses their own root, that they have way less fan yeah. than places. So it actually is, like, a, a one of the main uh, dishes there that can, that, that keeps people full. They they it, It's like a bread, almost. That's rice for us. huge in the south, in the south of the U.S., uh, too. Oh. Nice, so that's what I'm talking about. Seafood. Yeah, what is that kind of like shrimp on there? Shell? Mussels. Oh, it's a plate. It's a plate, not a freaking huge shell. I was like, oh, is that a gigantic abalone shell? No, it's a plate. Yeah, oh, yeah. They, they brown and they made hard on. It's pretty good. Their garlic shrimp right there is probably the best dish they have. Uh, this is kind of Spanish style, isn't it? Uh, oh, wow. Uh, yeah, Mediterranean. There you go. With hummus. Those, uh, because she is Mediterranean. Yeah. Looks good. Nice guy. That doesn't look good. <laughs> <laughs> that looks all right. I should, I should place some uh, a delivery order. Uh -huh. Uber Eats or something. See you in three weeks. Yeah, it's not very, I gotta be honest, that pizza doesn't look too good. No. Agreed. No, the, the pizzas are... Well, you see me. I eat a calzone here. Uh -huh. Ketchup as a fucking... I think it's almost a calzone right there. <laughs> like, 
If you order a calzone, they give you ketchup as a side. Yeah, at least Pizza Hut <laughs> gives you chili sauce. <laughs> Even that flatbread has a little bit of uh... three to four packets of ketchup with every pizza. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> A hawker style and, fried oysters. They do now have pizza sauce at Macro. But they had tomato paste right next to the tomato sauce. All you have to do is mix the two of them together, people. Oh my God. <laughs> I always forget how big Thailand is. Yeah, it's that bottom part going down there. That's the problem area, right where your cursor is. Mm -hmm. I do not go yeah, to that part of Thailand. How come? Uh, because it was partly Malaysia. And they have, you don't hear about it in Thailand, but the Muslims are fighting the Buddhists mm -hmm. down there. And they literally set off percussion bombs. That just sounds like the Muslims are fighting like Buddhists. When I think of Buddhism, I think of like chill. <laughs> yeah. Believe it or not, there are some uh, Buddhist, uh, 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 what do you even call them? I guess uh, guerrilla fighters, revolutionaries, whatever. Like in, uh, in Myanmar or in Burma, I guess, uh, they have... Uh, I don't know what they call it. Uh, they call it. Uh, I'm I'm an hour away from Myanmar, there, and I can't have, I can't uh, go into Myanmar. Oh, it's it's a weird country. No, it's a dictatorship by the military and stuff. Um, uh, and there seem to be like mm -hmm. almost no good guys. Honestly, that Aung San Suu Kyi, that was like the, you know darling of the west basically she turned into a little bit of a douchebag too uh, and then she was uh, overthrown again and so basically she's back to you know not being uh, a douchebag basically because you know the people that overthrew her are worse anyway it's a it's a mess yeah it, it's the reason why i can't go into miramar they they'll let ties go into miramar and cross the border here but i can't go in there because of all the political unrest now, before I could go a couple hours in the Miramar before they would stop me. Part of Miramar is kind of like part of China, a military zone. So they don't allow people to travel through it. Yeah, that's my favorite song. All right. Okay. Nah. Ador adore the Indian aromas. At fuck it. Fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> that looks yummy, whatever the fuck that is. I've never had that before. Like uh, potato paste with corn and stuff in a... What is it called right now? Uh, Freaking... Uh, uh, shit, I can't think of the fucking word. Anyway, kind of like an Indian tortilla. Turned up like a ball. That's kind of cool. Not a pakora. The fuck's it called? I can think of it. Nice. Now you know what Indian food to get if you're in fuck it Thailand. <laughs> so fuck it, I'm going to Thailand and then end up in fuck it Thailand. Apparently it's filled with Russians now. That's what I heard the other day. That's Phuket. Phuket? Yep. Excuse me, it's pronounced Phuket. Yeah. And actually, 80% of the condos are owned by Russians. 80%. Hmm. They literally have, and this is not allowed to happen in Thailand. You walk into a restaurant. And they greet you in Russian. And they're <laughs> Russian servers. That's not supposed to happen in Thailand. 
a foreigner cannot take a job that a Thai person can do. Hmm. Well, I mean, so they're just I mean, doing whatever they want here in Thailand. Well, if you have the and money, and a lot well, of I've them never had mafia. this dish. I've never had this dish, but I saw I'm subscribed to a bunch of food channels on uh, YouTube, and I saw this guy. Well, all in Chinese, it's kind of amusing. But uh, Chef Wang basically uh, put together this Mapo Tofu, and then he also has like a food explorer or like a food reviewer channel or whatever, where he goes around and basically shits on restaurants <laughs> and he goes around and talks about how bad all the food is. It's, it's somewhat amusing. Have anyway, you seen that, uh, that kid Keith Lee? Mm -hmm. He's fucking changing businesses lives i don't know how he got so big he's just some random random kid he fucking blew up and he goes to different restaurants he just was in atlanta and he talked hella shit he's like dude this worst service i've ever had was in atlanta that's pretty awful yeah i don't i don't like that I, i'm amused at how this chinese guy does it basically because it seems like they just don't care but yeah i don't like the whole I don't know, like South Park kind of made fun of it pretty good a few years ago, honestly, with Cartman, like the Yelpers and stuff and how they go around de demanding free food or shitting on a restaurant or something like but I don't know about that. I'm not a big fan of that kind of style. I'm amused sometimes when I see it, like I'm amused at the disparity. So I guess that's probably what it sounded like. That I'm like, I don't know. I'm not a big fan of like laughing at people's misfortune. I'm just kind of amused at the weird strangeness of it basically where he goes to somebody's restaurant he's like no this tofu is garbage and it's made really badly and i mean he's a lot more polite about it but he's basically talking about how this is wrong with it that's wrong with it that's wrong with it just no sugar coating at all whereas in the u.s i think a lot of people would sugarcoat it quite a bit more anyway you can come to thailand and do that and get arrested huh? and charged with uh oh uh when you talk bad about somebody, uh, uh, what was the other one that they sue a lot of people over? Uh, slander or libel or something? Yeah, slander. Hmm. Their slander laws here are completely different than the United States. Hmm. All you have to do is write and post it. Same thing in the UK, apparently. Uh, uh, and so uh, everything from books to journalism to everything else is a lot more uh, delicate, apparently, about people because they can essentially sue you for almost anything. And the standard of proof is apparently super low, whereas it's quite a bit higher here. Like if you're a public well, figure, you can't sue anybody. We had somebody on the show that was a cunt here away from getting sued for somebody slander. That was on your show. They almost got hit with a slander lawsuit here in Thailand. Oh, really? Yep. I don't know the story. Because I almost brought it against them. Oh, I got you. Who, who was it? Potent. Oh, well. It deserves probably quite a bit thrown at him. Um, but he's not in Thailand anymore. <laughs> Yeah. ate them up and spit them out <laughs> whatever yep ain't my loss the door yeah don't let the door kick him on the ass fuck <laughs> uh cheers everybody in the chat by the way cheers midwest cheers uh by the way marshall says i helped the actress <laughs> quite a bit away from the tree but she has the same hardy genetics what are you talking about now you were talking about my daughter's going back to the... Okay, I missed that entire argument. Never mind. Sometimes Daughter should be going back Sometimes to I... Cali to trim. Or going to... After oh, trimming California season, these days? No, the trimming nice economy Mexico. is gone now. Fucking hell, it's crazy. Um, you know, you used to call the trim immigrants basically like hiking on the, the, the road because, you know, trimming was a fairly lucrative profession. Honestly, you could pick it up and take it off, you know, pick it up and put it... What am I... What's the expression I'm trying to look pick it off and take fuck whatever what i'm trying to say is you could basically come and go as you please essentially now it's quite a bit different they don't pay you all that much there's not a whole lot of need for trimmers like the pound price is so low that a lot of times they just machine trim everything so yeah like whole economies in the north of california have just been obliterated by that absolutely freaking nutty and the pound price is just dropping and dropping and dropping cheers dead fish fan good to see you buddy uh, he's saying, anybody watching the BMFS stream live from England right now? Right on. Cheers, buddy. 
don't know what that is. And not the guy that's Just gonna... that uh he might have you're not the guy that interviewed Smash. I don't remember. Dead fish fan? Gosh, I don't remember. I know he's a uh, dead fish fan. Fuck. <laughs> yeah, Midwest uh, uh, Outlaw, I didn't read your comment earlier. Saying genetically modified organism, chem cookies by Mamico Seeds. Uh, and then, of course, uh, Midwest also loves the dead, especially Bob and Brent tunes, but can't stand strings. Oh, that's probably what they're talking about. They're talking about the the concert. That's probably why Bud's not here. They're they're probably talking about the Billy Strings concert or whatever in uh, what yeah saying, or whatever it was. Uh, it's probably going on right now. Honestly, yeah, it is. Hmm. So I've I, I just think Bud has said this before, but I I kind of forget. I always mean to ask him, but I'm almost embarrassed to ask him. So is he subscribed to like? The Grateful Dead channel or something because he's always talking about uh, these live streams. And we're like, what the fuck? Are you? Well, granted, I don't have cable or anything, so I don't know. But I assume it's like <laughs> that channel or some shit. But when you when you listen to Bud talk about Warren Haynes and the Grateful Dead, uh, he doesn't have to pay for anything like live streams. They're all given to him. They have like, like a, he's good friends a with Warren Haynes's manager, so he gets all the live live stream videos sent to him with the codes to watch them. Oh, so it's not like a special channel; it's just because they like him, basically. Well, it is a special. Yeah. It's on a, it's on a special website. I see. It's on another streaming website that you can you have to get the link to get get to it. Gotcha. <laughs> It's then all about the paid like for a, a paid for club or whatever, and everyone gets an email like, "Oh, Grateful Dead's going live." Come on out. I got you. But when you've been growing pot for thirty years and you take care of these people, when you go to the show, you give the guy a bag. You eventually get these perks. <laughs> you know, Bud knows to the only Phil Lash. Place. Personally. So, yeah, I've been out there with Bud. You know, he's know Grateful is. Dead family. He knows the people in management. Because basically, we grew up with them. Like, I don't even know. Like, I'm so bad with, like, the Dead. I, I'm not a Dead fan. I never have been. But, like... Don't, don't appreci- see that on the show. You'll just make enemies. I appreciate nah. it. I appreciate the music. I don't mind you fish. It. I, I really like this band called Consider the Source. If you oh, ever, they're like a jam band. Um, the guitarist has like a, a double necked guitar with a bass and guitar attack. It's he's one of my favorites. I, I don't I, I do like Billy Strings. I like the way he plays guitar. When that guitar puts on too much weight, it'll be a double chin guitar. Uh, <laughs> Here's Firefly. Good to see you. Operation Annihilation in the house. What's going on? By the way, I need to read Atomic Spoon's comment. Uh, he's saying, uh, in my teens, I went to a Chinese friend's house for dinner. They cooked amazing Chinese foods, but worried I wouldn't like their ethnic food. So they boiled me some plain peeled potatoes, no salt or anything. That's what they thought was <laughs> traditional Western slash New Zealand food. Just a bowl of potatoes. <laughs> That's funny. Oh, my God. Oh, man. One of the worst meals. So the food was pretty good uh, in Israel. But one of the absolute worst meals, <laughs> a fucking country mile, uh, was at a really well, uh, a really well um, uh, reviewed restaurant. I can even show the fucking restaurant. Uh, uh, Addie's, I think. Uh it. They must see it. They're closing now. Anyway, uh, I need to. Well, I almost need to show you a picture, but this the picture almost doesn't do it justice because the picture. I guess I'm a. No matter what, my photographs are always kind of pretty. So every time I've shown people, like, oh, that looks good, and I'm like, literally, it was uh, here restaurant. Uh... Well, there's a restaurant here that has. Okay five stars and i don't know how it gets over two and a half is there any michelin starred restaurants in thailand 
Yeah. I think we even have one here in Chiang Rai. In, uh, uh, there's quite a few of them in Bangkok and Phuket. That whole Michelin Phuket is an no island, and it's a minimum of fifty U.S. dollars to go from the airport to your hotel. It's a minimum of fifty U.S. dollars. Place looks solid. Well, here you go with the potatoes. So basically, uh, after the terrorist shit, pretty much everything closed super fucking early. And I would spend well, for you. Hospital and I would come back and, I, you know, everything would be closed. And I'd be walking around. I'm staying in a hotel. There's no dinner or nothing. So basically, I'm looking for a place to have dinner. Uh, uh, this restaurant, Avi's, was one of the only goddamn places open. And I kept walking by it. I walked by it a couple times because I was like, man, I don't really know if I want to sit down and eat this kind of uh, style restaurant. It's very much like a sit down family restaurant or something. Uh, and the menu, honestly, was fairly expensive. Like most of the stuff was like 20, 30 dollars, not shekels, like fucking dollars basically. It's 120, 140 shekels. Anyway, so finally, after walking around for a bit and a lot of stuff I'd already eaten at like five times that week or something. So I'm like, God fucking damn it, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go to this goddamn obvious. So I go there and I basically ordered uh what I thought would be delightful, and sure enough, the quality was good, but it was the like Moroccan inspired merguez sausages, and it came out like four little like weenie sausages that are like the size of your freaking finger knuckle, pretty much like four one, uh, 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 skewer. <laughs> eight of those total. No, wait, was it four total or eight total? I can't remember. Anyway, it was a tiny amount of sausage and I ordered the potato and they, he actually fucked up and gave me French fries. And that, I guess, saved my ass that day because otherwise I would have been starving. He brought me my potato and he literally brought me the potato with nothing. Just speaking of just a boiled potato, there wasn't ketchup. Yeah. There, wasn't sauce, there wasn't any it was just a boiled potato no salt on the table nothing that lemon <laughs> was there for the fish basically and in the meantime the the freaking four to eight sausages and the two potatoes and i guess french fries for free uh was 85 shekels or something which was basically like 22 dollars 25 dollars so yeah that was that was an experience I wait is shekels their real currency <laughs> Yeah, that's the that's their, that's their currency. Yeah, uh, and it's basically three point nine ish shekels to the dollar, pretty much. Wow. So if you pay like eight and shekels, then, you're paying like twenty three, twenty four dollars. And on the way out the restaurant, you're going, son of a bitch! I just paid twenty five dollars for fucking Seriously. potatoes. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. And it was just like, what the fuck is this? There's oh, a couple restaurants over here too. There. Pardon? There's a couple restaurants over here too that are just that way. It's just like, oh my God, how do you stay open with these prices? I guess some people have lots of money. I don't know. That obvious place, a lot of times they were super busy. So I don't know. That Ola is actually in a perfect location. And you can sit there in the evening and watch the clock tower, play its music and everything like that. But uh, the food's okay, but I don't go there and eat there on a regular basis. I've ate there twice since the guy took it over two years ago. There's many other restaurants around here to eat at for much, much cheaper hmm. and much more and more food. Yeah, you, you definitely get a good deal, Captain, whenever you post up on uh, Instagram. It looks good, too. Well, I'm I was just going to say, uh, Atomic is talking <laughs> about how uh, the father Thanks. of that Chinese uh, friend basically ate one of the, the boiled potatoes and pretended to like it in solidarity. He's like, whoa, great food culture you have. You know, Try not to make Atomic feel like a jerk off, probably. Anyway, the amusing thing is, though, that you know he was wrong, basically. Like, even people talk shit about uh, British food, how bland it is. But actually, the funny thing is that there was a very narrow window of British food being super bland, and it was because of the uh, World War II, basically. They had extreme rationing 
uh, in the 40s and even up until I think the, the mid 50s, basically, because of the fallout, because don't forget, Britain got pounded by the Nazis. Uh, and, you know, they, they spent so much money on the war and everything else. It took years, honestly, uh, their, their empire was falling apart. It, honestly, it was a really uh, tough time for Britain, frankly, for a number of years after the war. Um, uh, they still have had rationing basically for like a good 15 years, maybe uh, yeah. uh, going in after the war. And that was the time that basically like British food, like didn't have any fucking curry, didn't have any pepper, didn't have any, you know, like pretty much super, super. I don't even, yeah, maybe they didn't even have salt for all I know. I, I wonder oh, if what's in the audience can tell awesome. us. But British food is actually, now I'll argue about the peas because British have a very strong predilection for two things that I can't stand, which is peas and beans. I don't understand why you would put beans on a plate of breakfast food. It, it just seems like you just ruined an entire... I don't get that either. Beer, but... Mushy peas? Oh, my baked, God. Baked, baked, baked beans. Baked beans and toast for breakfast. Ew. Mushy beans. You're still beans. speaking a foreign language to me. I don't yeah, know why. No. Yeah. <laughs> pancake, pancake and syrup instead of that, that would be a lot yeah. more superior. But anyway, long story short, British food has a lot of flavor in it. Uh, and they said, like, one of the reasons, or uh, what, uh, what's the expression? Like, somebody I was talking to recently was talking about how the Dutch and the British oftentimes get this reputation for having bland food, but they controlled the spice trade. So isn't it strange that, like, people that have this reputation for uh, bland food control the spice trade? How did how did they know what to sell? Long story short, they actually used a lot of those. And British mm -hmm. food is flavorful, honestly. Um, I don't know if I'm making the best argument right now. But still, find me some British food. I bet you, uh, you'll like it. So, so back in the day, I can speak on this because my, my dad and my grandparents both they immigrated from the Britain. And they were, and it was when, ugh, can't speak right now so they were on rations like you said Phoebe and it was they only get so much a day and then the kids if it was a kid you get an egg twice a week and the parents I believe you can only get an egg once a week wow. yeah and you actually they had actual like ration like a coupon thing I don't mm -hmm. yeah but during World War 2 and World War 1 we were doing the same thing here Rationing everything, gas, fucking yeah. food. It showed up in World War Two. You can still find the World War Two stamps for like gasoline and bread and meat. I'm okay with peas, but any kind of mushy peas or pea soup or something. Oh my god, no! Oh, dude, no. It's so good. Can't stand it. I'm part Scottish. I'm third generation Scottish, so. And but you, no, you made, it's fine too. You're, is fine. you're making fun okay. of potatoes, but I actually eat. I actually boil a pot of potatoes twice a week to eat here. Nice. But do you eat we them do. basically plain, like a savage, or do you put even salt? I on put them? a. I put a little bit of butter, and I found this Jim Beam maple bourbon barbecue sauce that is just awesome on the potatoes <laughs> mrs d actually makes uh roasted potatoes here with rosemary and garlic cuts them up and roast them in the oven like no no midwest no bangers and mash yeah <laughs> that's a, that's a common one here bangers and mash yeah First page comes up both macaroons and snails. Escargo, my cargo. You know, I had someone, I, I opened up a breakfast restaurant for this lady. And I had like, uh, he was a veteran, like an older guy. And he's like, oh, I want some shit on a shingle. And I'm like, what the hell is that? <laughs> and I, I Google it and I'm like, Oh, it's an actual it's, dish. Yeah, it's corned <laughs> beef. It's corned beef hash on a piece of toast. Yeah. <laughs> mm. See, I've never been a, a corned beef fan. No, that's like spam. I hate spam. I don't eat spam. I like, uh, I like the a corned beef sandwich right now. 
Oh my God, I'd pay fifteen dollars for one. <laughs> my my dad you used have to, to like pay more than that now. Shit, corned beef is expensive these days. Probably be eighteen dollars these days. Holy beef. Well, you know, I have to for good roast beef over here for like roast beef sandwiches. It's mm. about forty five dollars a pound. Oh, wow. turkey breast is forty dollars a pound. Holy fuck. Do they dip the yeah. turkey for gold first? It's if you notice oh, turkey is, cool. is also uh here in Thailand made an exit from Subway's menu. And when I went back to the United States, they were doing away with uh turkey and subway. Oh wow. Uh oh. I I was lucky. I don't know what I've heard of before. Cork we off. have I said that wrong. You basically boil shit with hot rocks. <laughs> like you you heat up rocks in a fire, and then you basically put a bunch of food in a in a pot, and then throw the rocks in with the the food, and the rocks cook the food. Yeah, just in like Kirby, sand in Kirby, there's a restaurant that you can you cook your own food on a hot lava rock. That's fun. Yeah. The scouts, I like how they, man, I got those perfect. I like how they uh, make Turkish coffee in the sand, in the little cups. I had one of those. Uh, actually, uh, yeah, my last day in Israel, I went to a little coffee shop in Jaffa which is uh, actually a super fucking old city. I wish I'd spent more time there. I literally just kind of drove through it and then just parked and had a fucking coffee pretty much. Uh, but the chick basically made a Turkish coffee in the sand. It's kind of cool. Nice. How was it? Yeah. It was nice. Really yeah. creamy. Like, I hear that when they, 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 they hit it a couple times and it froths up and then it's really like frothy and stuff. I yeah, told I mean, it's not creamy because it's just basically coffee. But uh, yeah, you get. I guess you get a lot. Uh, what do they call like a crema? I guess, on an espresso, you get a lot of that crema. I suppose um, it is a little bit different texture and flavor. I like Turkish coffee. Uh, a lot of times they make it way too sweet. It was really nice that they actually asked uh, every time I was there, like, "Oh, how, how much sugar?" Blah blah blah. Because normally, if you get it like uh, I don't even know Jordan or something, or in the past when I was in Jerusalem, they would just make it like super sweet, basically without asking. Like way too sweet, honestly. But, yeah. yeah. And here in Thailand, it's like I think they use like five times the amount of coffee to make it. That's crazy, too. I mean, a shit can get up and walk off the table. <laughs> <laughs> You know your coffee's strong when you have to order an extra cup of hot water. Do you guys have D'Angelo's? Like, no. around here, D'Angelo's is, like, the sub place. Like, better than, way better than um, Subway. They actually cook, like, they have a grill. They cook the steak and cheese right on the grill and stuff. Um, I Ooh. love it. I guess I was spoiled because we have a D'Angelo. I've had a D'Angelo's in my, both the cities I've grew up in, and I'd rather go there over Subway any day. In Cleveland, we have a place called 3S Subs. That looks like worms. I think that's snakes. Ah. Or is it eels? Might be eels. Ugh. That looks <laughs> like worms. Honestly, they might eat those too. Yeah, they do. Just grubs, <laughs> silkworm grubs, I think, right there. A lot of people love those. Oh, gross. Silkworm. Sir, I'm, I'm really well, not into, into like insects and shit, but intellectually, there's nothing wrong with them, but I'm just kind of grossed out by them. They're yeah. actually really high in protein and a bunch of other <laughs> stuff. They're good for you, yeah. I'm not so hungry anymore. Right? <laughs> when I go to... If I'm I sorry. was to go to that part of Cambodia, I don't like it because of the people that took it over and took that part over. 
But Cambodia has islands where the whole island does nothing but silkworms. Uh, that's funny, Tommy. Take you to a silkworm farm where they make silk. Yum. Silkworm soup. Oh. Yep. I'll put hair on your chest. Well, there's like spots where I ain't eating that. <laughs> You like there's spots where like they just sell bugs, crickets, beetles. Like it's a uh, big, it's a big cuisine in other countries. When you come to Thailand and you're at a party, you're going to find a set of popcorn and stuff like that. You're going to have peanuts and bugs because they eat them like popcorn. Yeah, oh. I mean, they've got like three or four different kinds that they eat for snack. And it's like, no, no, that's all right. I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm good. <laughs> Let me have my Coke, my Pepsi. I'm all right. I'll sit here. I've had some chocolate covered crickets. I've had crickets. Um, <laughs> yeah, I've had, I don't know what other bugs I've had. Rob. No, I've, I've never tried snake, but I've tried alligator. Was that good? That alligator. It was all right. Really it tough. tough. There you go. Get that answer done. Basically spoiled. Uh, actually, a couple friends of mine from Louisiana told me that pretty much you have to eat gator fresh. And most of the time, even when you get like frozen gator and stuff, it's like apparently like let out and not treated very well. <laughs> Anyway, apparently gator is delicious uh, if you get it fresh, evidently. I like uh, mud bugs. Uh, crawfish? Yeah, those are I good. I love them. You know, uh, one person eats three to five pounds in a sitting. Like, there's such a... You have to eat, like, three of them to get a good piece of meat. Well, that's it. Yeah, their claws don't really have all that much meat in them, like a crab does, for example. There's a little bit, but uh, the majority of the meat is basically in that tail. And each crawdad, even though the crawdad might be that big or something, maybe even a little bigger, the freaking meat is like morsel size, not even bite size. It's like a morsel of meat, basically. So yeah, like three crawdads is like maybe one bite. So yeah, I'm not surprised that you'd need like three pounds of fucking crawdads. Yeah. It's kind of well it's not that different with crab either. People always assume like, holy shit, two crabs, that's a lot of crab. And then you actually like deshell the crab and there's like a whole pile of crab meat. There's mostly shell in a in a crab. I'd leave three to four shrimp on my eat? meal out of a kilo. <laughs> so I'm coming up three to four shrimp short on a full kilo is what I eat when I go to the shrimp farm. So you eat like a pound and three quarters of shrimp? Well, they have the heads and the tails and the shells on That's them. a lot of shrimp, though. <laughs> yeah, I, but I eat that. The ocean called. A lot of people call prawns shrimp, I've noticed. True, it's very confusing. I think in Australia, they call all of them prawns. Yeah. Well, here we call shrimp the smaller prawns shrimp. And then if, if they're over like five, six inches, then they become a prong. I love muscle. Like my one of my favorite meals is like <laughs> like pasta with like muscle sauce. Uh, Yo. You I ruined like it. Pasta in the broth and shit. And then pasta. I check this out. I hope it's smash it later. I used to go to this restaurant with my dad, and he's like, try it, because I like clams. There's a gator for you. Really very well. Ribbit. Speaking of Louisiana. I feel bad for all the frogs you have to kill to have a freaking meal. They say it's delicious. Not all that much. It's pretty tasty, honestly, but a frog like probably has less meat. Well, I don't know. It depends on the frog, I guess. Yeah, if you get a fat frog. But even then, like a fat fucking frog is smaller than a chicken leg for sure. So like you'd basically need like the legs of five frogs to really feel full, honestly. And at that point, I'm like, fuck the slaughter. So yeah, I kind of stay away from frogs. Just <laughs> well, 
the one thing I know is frogs, when they breed and stuff, they have a lot of eggs because of like the chances of actually getting to like full grown. Is... Well, a lot of creatures are that way. Yeah, honestly, a lot of creatures. Well, dogs are that way too. Dogs have like eight puppies, sometimes ten puppies, and so on. You know? the evolution just cats assumes. will kill their own. Pretty brutal. I've heard that. I've never really seen it, but I guess I've heard that. I've heard yeah. that kangaroo mothers basically like abandon uh, the baby that's in their pouch, basically if they're in trouble. I guess they always have a, a, a baby in the pipe, so to speak. One in the chamber. Oh. <laughs> well, boys and girls, we're getting up to uh, <coughs> 420. Uh, I'm thinking we might call it. What do you guys figure? Sounds like a plan? Sounds good. Yeah. Uh, a lot right there, probably uh, jamming out to tunes. Uh, no, but it has surgery or a doctor's appointment at 1 p.m. Oh, well, that's right. Look, bud. Yeah, it's like a checkup. <laughs> you just had surgery. Mm. Wow. <coughs> as well. But yeah, he was talking about his day being all screwed up because he had Billy strings. Then he had a doctor's appointment, and then he wanted to listen to us too. And he's in chat now. Here's boy. Here's one. Good to see you. Oh shit on the brick. <laughs> uh, finish. This. Okay. Join. Hope your doctor's appointment went okay, bud. Hope everything's healing right. Bud said, "Just finish doctor's appointment." It's three thirty. I'm smoking white truffle. I love it. I really like oh, it. Wow. I That's actually picked up there. more of that draft that Dracula, even though it had the male oh. flower on it. Just oh. because it, it gets me high. <laughs> Listen to the damnness. The children of the night. Oh, uh, so I got this great fun dip going, and then I got blueberry cookies. S one. Uh, the great fun dip is blacklight fantasy to Cushman's, and blacklight fantasy is Mendo perps to purple unicorn. So I'm hoping it it should be pretty frosty. Should smoke good. It's that eight. sounds good. It grows like fucking crazy, like. I'm, I was surprised on how vigorous this one was. Oh, shit. I'm hoping my roots grow through my cocoa pots that I bought. <laughs> um, They're in Ball, so they do see they were scored a Ball watch. I knew Bell and Ross, but not Ball. Apparently, it's a Swiss, uh, uh, Swiss watch company. They kind of look like... Uh, Long team or something, but then they're priced like uh, Omegas. Anyway, nice watch. Congrats. The funny thing is, there are so many watch companies, it's kind of crazy. Like, mm -hmm. we know about what AP, Patek, Rolex, Jacob and Co. now, but there's a million other brands that are, are get get good money for their watches. A lot I really of like Swatch. Oh, swatches are pretty solid on they're just all roboticized and stuff. They cut catch a lot of shit, but honestly, they make their own parts and stuff still. I kind of respect them honestly for it. Uh they've got all they've got like um uh, what's the word for it? The fucking uh oh shit, I can't think of the goddamn word. The really expensive movement, uh the tourbillon. They've got a fucking swatch tourbillon that's like, I don't know, a couple thousand bucks or something. Normally you have to pay like sixty or a hundred thousand dollars for one. They've got one that you can buy for like two thousand bucks. That's freaking props, honestly. Um Check this out. A lot of those luxury companies basically buy movements. A lot of people don't realize they don't like hand make each yeah. Omega or whatever watch. Like a lot of those movements are just basically bought on the Swiss movement market, kind of. I want this. It's a, <laughs> it's a collab with The Simpsons. I was just going to say, I can't tell what the fuck that is. It's supposed to be pizza or bubble gum or what? It's a know. donut. With a it's bite a taken out. Oh, that's pretty sick. 
I like it. I really like this. Yeah, it's a donut, like the one from the Quickie Mart. But yeah, these, I was looking at these too. <laughs> I polished my gold watch the other day, the band on it, and now I've got to take it into the watchmaker. One of the uh, hash marks that make up 11 is gone. <laughs> hmm. It's down at the bottom of the watch now. <laughs> That's awesome. You see, you can see through the back, and it's rubies and gold gears. Cool movements right on. 419, yeah. on a minute. Definitely take a look. Oh, yeah, we're about to hit the 20. Yeah, My 420, actually, everybody. That's it. Yeah. Okay. My 422 AM. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Yeah, More yeah. back on 1212. 12. Are you going yeah, back yeah. To after this, or are you going to rock the day away, uh, Captain? Uh, I'm going to rock it out. Really? Yeah, I have a one o'clock uh, surgery time. Oh, wow. So I figured once I get done with surgery, I'll just come back and pass out. There you go. That makes sense. <laughs> Cheers, everyone. Cheers. Cheers, folks. Happy 420. Well, um, I suppose that no. Yeah, I'll be the first to go. I got to get some food. I haven't eaten. I hope everyone has a great day. Um, yeah. Be safe, everyone. Have a, a good rest of your day. D, Captain, I hope you guys have a good day. Be safe. You too, Smash. Later, Smash. Uh, go for it, Captain. And by the way, good luck on your surgery. Yeah. Well, thank you. To give you Everybody the, uh, out in chat. Thanks yeah. for stopping by and hanging out with us. D, thank you for all you do. And Fumi, thank you for putting on the show for us to come and hang out. Welcome. Here's one. Good to see you. Like Peace. I said, uh, good luck. Uh, thank you. Uh, yeah. Ah, brains. I hope everybody has a great rest of the day. Don't forget to join me Saturday if on the Flavors channel. Uh, 11 o'clock or 10 o'clock Eastern, 7 o'clock Pacific for another takeover. And thanks to everybody in chat for watching and all you lurkers and people in the background. Smoking a joint, doing some work, maybe on a conference call. Who knows? Who knows? Anyways. Later. Yes. What if they are the nuclear engineers for an underwater submarine? That could happen to hard to get the YouTube, but you never know. You never know. Maybe they have um, underwater submarines. I guess most submarines are underwater now that I think about it. That's not. It doesn't have to be. It could be above the water, right? If it wants to be, shit, it could have balloons on it or something. Anyway, shut the fuck up, humanor. Enough with the underwater submarines. Uh, cheers, everybody in the chat. Cheers, uh, Mr. Scotto. Good to see you. Who else in, uh, is hanging with us? J5's in the house. What's going on, buddy? Uh, of course, Dead Fish fan. Couch in the house. Midwest. Zesty Air is saying hello. Actually, peace. Cheers, Zesty. Trey Money. He's saying getting stitches out of surgery, eh? Uh, maybe. Shit, I don't know. Uh, what else? Uh, who else is hanging here? Bud Kilowatt's still hanging. He said, waste of time. Told him everything's fine. He looked at the scar, took two minutes, and he's done. That's pretty pretty annoying. Well, what are you going to do? At least it was good news, I suppose. But Kilowatt, at least he didn't say, holy shit, what the fuck? That could happen, too. Uh, hopefully it doesn't. But in the meantime, Operation Annihilation. <clears throat> good to see you. Who else in here? Martial artist, uh, Atomic Spoon. Who else? And of course, pissed off. Anybody who I've missed, uh, cheers to you. Miss Chronic, uh, have a good afternoon yourself. Uh, uh, Green Puffin Man as well. Hope you do well uh, uh, the rest of the day. Uh, I guess that's it, ladies and germs. Thanks very much for hanging. Uh, what was I going to say? Um, trying to catch up on orders and stuff. So please uh, uh, have a little bit of patience still, my friends. It's been taking me forever to, to catch up on stuff. Uh, but little by little by little, I do hope to uh, get back to it. Uh, a few people emailed me, so please don't think I'm ignoring your emails. Uh, just trying to get to everything, basically. Uh, what am I trying to say else? Um, 
I guess that's the long and short of it. No big announcements, really. Uh, if you guys, same story applies, basically. I am looking to kind of rebuild my library, basically. It was a little bit of a rough last couple, three months. I had to move, and then basically when I was stuck in Israel for a while, a lot of my garden kind of you know died off and stuff. Eh, whatever, it is what it is. Uh, new beginnings and all that. Uh, if you guys have some interesting clones or... Uh, well, basically, that's what I'm mostly interested in right now because I don't have that much space uh, to grow seeds. So if you guys have some interesting clones that you would, wouldn't mind sharing with me, I'd be very happy to uh, uh, potentially share them. Honestly, uh, little by little, I hope to have enough stuff that I can uh, share back, basically. So, uh, And I still have a few things, so it's not like I don't have anything, 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 but it was a little bit uh, uh, troublesome when I came back. Boy, oh boy, it was hard to lose some of the plants that I lost. But anyway, if you guys have some stuff you'd like to share, please let me know. Of course, uh, Discord, fumadartchronictable.com, uh, say hello in the YouTube chat, whatever. What else? Uh, blah, 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 blah. I keep forgetting something. Oh, uh, same story with the Fumador Skunk Works. If you guys would like to work on some projects, uh, I unfortunately, I got a bunch of messages, or not maybe a bunch, but I got a few messages before I left for Israel and even when I was there. I'll have to little by little by little catch up on those because I've got a bunch that I just kind of ignored, honestly, because there's nothing I could do about it at the time. Uh, hopefully, we can start working on some stuff. If you guys would like to still... Oh, D is still here. Right on. Uh, if you guys would like to still work on uh, uh, some projects, please let me know. That would be spectacular. D is saying fumadoro.com. Well, that is my website. I should probably let you know, ladies and germs. Uh, don't forget to w uh, visit. I was going to say visit. Don't forget to visit fumadoro.com. Don't forget to visit fumadoro.com, ladies and germs. Uh, coupon code BRAINS applies to uh, fumadoro seeds. Uh, How is that pronounced, D? Ah, BRAINS. That's how it's, that, that's exactly how it's pronounced. Uh, what was I going to say? Don't forget to take a look at the merch, ladies and germs. A lot of people are saying how much they like. I just got an email today from somebody who said uh, uh, he liked the new, I think, Lime River Rose shirt in the uh, ox blood color. Anyway, I'm glad you guys like it. That's the idea. So take a look, of course, at the merch. Uh, the merch ships very quickly, so don't fear about that, ladies and germs. There's no delays on that right now. Uh, hoping to honestly add some more. I have a cool, a, a few honestly cool designs that I came up with in Israel and stuff, not even just weed related stuff. So, anyway, hopefully, there'll be some fun t shirts for you. Uh, and I don't know, coffee mugs and whatever else, but little by little, it takes a while to uh, put up each design. So, anyway, thanks very much, Pip Jam, for putting the link right there. Uh, we were uh, uh, trying to say good things about your national cuisine a while ago. I don't know if you managed to hear that. Uh, I did talk a little bit about uh, shit about your breakfast beans because I just can't get over that. But uh, you could totally have pancakes and you choose breakfast beans. I, I don't understand. But uh, still, ladies and germs, we can agree to disagree. Other than that, thanks very much for hanging. Thank you, D, of course. Uh, and by the way, D, you were doing the, the takeover this Saturday, I think you mentioned, right? Yes, sir. People. Awesome. I keep catching him off guard. Uh, but thank you very much, Steve, for uh, all the help that you offer. And thank you for, for doing these takeovers. Uh, I guess that's it, ladies and germs. Uh, in theory, we could bring back the grim and chills, but I don't know about that yet. So we'll see. Maybe we'll play it by ear. Maybe if on Friday, uh, I feel like grilling and chilling or something, maybe we can do it. Although this Friday, I might honestly not be here. So we'll see. We'll play it by ear for the grill and chill, ladies and germs uh in theory if you guys wanted to we could always do a grill and chill on saturdays or something so we can we can always discuss that in the future anyway thanks very much for hanging uh be kind be decent be gentle don't be fucking pricks dicks or lunatics uh other than that my friends uh i guess that's it have a good time have a good rest of the day if it's the evening for you have a good evening and uh don't forget to smoke something wonderful if you can uh, other than that thanks very much my friends and uh adios later gators and uh Julianne Taters. Oh, that's wild with the uh...